These are notes on ionic bonds. We'll, we'll talk about properties of ionic bonds. We'll also talk about how to create a chemical formula for ionic compounds, and then also how to name ionic bonds. So ionic bonds are not considered a true bond. They are the combination of a cation and an anion that will come together to form a ratio, and that ratio will actually be considered electrically neutral. They will create a crystal that keeps growing, so this is a property of an ionic bond. And we also call ionic bonds salts. So anytime you hear a salt, you need to think of an ionic bond. One of the reasons why we don't consider ionic bonds true bonds is because they do form crystals that keep growing, and that's why we just don't call it a true bond. What an ionic bond is, is an electrostatic attraction between a positive and a negative ion. Presence of a metal usually tells us that we have an ionic bond, and really we can always say that a metal and a non-metal is going to equal an ionic bond. And then some of the properties of an ionic bond is that they form a solid crystal, they have a high melting and boiling point, they are good electrical conductors, and they're soluble in water. You should have learned that from the chemical bond lab. So here's some rules for creating chemical formulas for ionic compounds. So the first thing is, is that the cation is always written first. The charges must balance out to equal zero. That's really, really important. The charges must balance out to equal zero. And this is why we did oxidation numbers first, because now we can identify what the charges are on these atoms so that we can create a neutral ionic compound, if you will. So, for example, here, if I have sodium and chlorine, there, it's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio because they're going to balance each other out. But on magnesium and chlorine, I'm going to need two chlorine ions because they're both a negative one charge to neutralize that magnesium with a plus two charge. And then the same example goes for the magnesium and the nitrate ion, so the NO3 minus one ion. I would need two of those ions. For example, that little subscript two is showing me that I have two of those ions. I would need two of those ions in order to make, to balance out the plus two of the magnesium. So we're going to use crossing over to determine if, how many compounds we have to, to show the ratio. And we're going to show practice problems there on our writing ionic compounds practice problems. So go ahead and get that sheet out and flip to this sheet. So what you're going to do is identify the ions and what the charge would be on that ion. So sodium would be a plus one because it's in column one. Chlorine would be a minus one because it's in column 17. So you're going to write the ions, and then what you're going to do is cross over those ions, and that's what those arrows are showing. So you're crossing over those, those charges, if you will. So we like to say that charges are light and subscripts are heavy. And so we're going to cross over those ions, and we're going to say, okay, well, that one is now a, a one right there. And notice I don't bring the charge with it. I just identify the amount. And then so I've got my subscripts ones. One of the things that we have, we're going to have a rule, is if it's a one, we're going to drop it. And also if it's the same number, we're going to drop it. So in this case, we have two rules that are applying here. So I have Na1 and Cl1. So now I'm going to drop that to NaCl. So let's do an example with calcium chloride. So calcium is a plus two charge because it's in column two. And chlorine, again, is in column 17, so it's a minus one charge. And it's a minus one charge, remember, because it's easier to gain that one electron than lose seven. And so now I'm going to cross over those charges. Remember, charges are light, subscripts are heavy. And so we'll cross over those charges and get Ca1. See, that one is corresponding to that subscript right there. And Cl2, and that two is corresponding with that charge. And we drop the ones, and so my actual compound for calcium chloride is CaCl2. So then, how do we name ionic bonds? Monoatomic, which means one atom. Monoatomic positive ions will always have the name of the metal ion. For example, Na plus is just the cation of sodium, so it's very easy to name the monoatomic cations. Transition elements to the left of the stair step and within the D block are going to have multiple charges, but our exceptions are aluminum, zinc, and silver. Aluminum is always a plus three, zinc is always a plus two, and silver is always a plus one. So with these three that are in the D block and to the left of the stair step, those three do not need Roman numerals in the name because those charges are never going to vary. 
So within the D block and to the left of the stair steps, those charges can vary. And so we're going to have Roman numerals used in the name. So for example, copper plus one right there is just named copper one. And then Cu plus two is just named copper two. So it's very easy to identify with the name what the charge is on the atom. So monoatomic negative ions, these are going to have of the monoatomic negative ions will always have, will always be the ions of non-metal atoms, so most of the time in our P block, and will always have the suffix of IDE. So for example, O minus 2 is oxide, Cl minus 1 is chloride, and so our monoatomic negative ions or our monoatomic anions are always going to have that IDE ending. Polyatomic negative ions will have the name given on our ion sheet, so remember poly means many, so many atoms, and it's really important that you memorize these. So example, SO4 minus 2, that is sulfate. So you're just going to need to learn those names, and that's really important, so start making flashcards of those. So let's go back and practice some Lewis structures really quickly. Um, or actually, let's go back and practice naming. Sorry, we'll get to Lewis structures in a second. So the first thing that you're going to do is identify the monoatomic name. So with our monoatomic cations, it's really easy. It's just the name on the periodic table. So that's just sodium. And then we look at chlorine and drop the INE and add the IDE. And so our ending would be IDE, sodium chloride, is how you name NaCl. So let's practice with calcium chloride. I'm just going to rewrite our example here from before. So I know that calcium is my name of my monoatomic cation. And then chlorine is my monoatomic anion. So I drop the ending and add the IDE. So the name of this one is calcium chloride. So let's look at our, review our rules. We know that if it's, the number is a one. So if the subscript is a one, for example, right here or right here, we're going to drop it. If the number is the same, we're going to drop it. This happens to be a 1, but it's also the same number, so we're going to drop it. We're going to drop the charges as neutral, so we like to say charges are light and subscripts are heavy, so we drop the charges as neutral when we cross over. And then we're going to put parentheses up around polyatomic ions and cross over. So I have a couple examples next here. So if I've got sodium phosphate, for example, I'm going to write my ions out, and I like to write them a little bit closer together. And let's circle our charges here, and I like to put our polyatomics in parentheses as well. So if I circle my charge here, I've got the minus 3 charge going there, the plus 1 charge going there. And remember, when I write them as subscripts, I'm going to drop the charges, so it would be Na3. So there's three sodiums, and then phosphate. So the name of this would be sodium because that's the name of my metallic cation and phosphate because that's the name of my polyatomic anion. So sodium phosphate, pretty easy to name there. So let's do another example where we have multiple polyatomics once we do our crossovers. So barium phosphate, so we've got our barium cation, our phosphate anion. So I like to write them, again I like to write them closer together and I like to put the polyatomics in parentheses because it's going to tell us to cross over outside the parentheses. The reason why we want to do that is because we can never mess with how many atoms are actually within this ion. It's really, really important that you never change that number right there. That's PO4 is the phosphate ion. Do not mess with that. So we're going to circle our charges and cross over. So that means that that 2 is going to go to the outside of the parentheses there. And that negative 3 is going to go down and identify with the barium. So when I write it, I've got a BA3, so look at I've dropped the charge, so there's no more charge as my subscript. It's just identifying the amount of that, I, of that element in that compound. And then I'm identifying that I need two phosphates here to make this a neutral atom, or a neutral compound, sorry. So I know that my name is barium phosphate because barium is the name of my metallic cation. Phosphate is the name of my polyatomic anion. So now let's look at looking, the, looking at the valence electrons. So what this is asking you to do is identify that you've got one valence electron there and that you've got seven valence electrons for chlorine, one for sodium, seven for chlorine. And this is just showing that sodium has lost one electron with that plus one and chlorine has gained that one electron. So that's just showing where those electrons are going. 
On the calcium example, I've drawn arrows to show that those two calcium ions are going to the two chlorine ions. So this is how I would represent that electron transfer. So just a visual of that electron transfer. And then this is what the other side of your worksheet should look like as we practice. And then also you should have the name written in there. So let's do a couple together. If we've got potassium and fluorine, I'm going to draw in my valence electrons. I'm going to show that potassium is transferring its electron. So it's going to look something like that. I'm going to write the charges. I know that I've got a plus one and a minus one. I've done my crossover. K1, F1. I'm going to drop the ones and I also have the same number. So I've got my potassium ion there and my fluorine ion there. And then based on my naming rules, I know that that is potassium fluoride. So let's do another example here really quickly. So we've got magnesium iodide. So I have seven ions on iodine and two, ion, two electrons, excuse me, seven electrons on iodine, two electrons on magnesium. So I'm going to transfer one of the electrons to the iodine, but I have to be careful because there's only, there, magnesium still has an electron left. So what I'm going to do is add another iodine and transfer that other magnesium so that I'm showing the magnesium has lost two electrons and now I have two iodines present. Both of them have gained one electron. So now I write my element with the charge atom and I show my crossing over so it would be Mg1 I2. I know my rule is to drop the ones so my compound would look like that and then when I name it it would be magnesium magnesium iodide. So on the back let's look at practice problems here. One thing I want you to do first is put in parentheses all of your polyatomics and then what I want you to do is on the first ten just take your charges and cross them over so for example that barium carbonate there and you cross it over and here we're, we're showing that you've got the same number so you can just do BaCO3 and then I'm going to name it barium carbonate because it's the metallic cation and the polyatomic anion so with eleven with starting with 11 right here, what we really want you to do is always put charges above the words. So nickel 2 is a plus 2 and acetate is a minus 1. So then you're going to write the charge and write the ion and then you're going to show that ion crossing over and then write the compound. Lastly, what you're going to do is on 21 and 22, use oxidation numbers to help identify the charges. That's and to also help you name. And we will practice these in class. Thanks for coming ready with the notes done.